Hey everyone, how's everyone doing today? My name is Gina and I am doing pretty good today. I'm doing great today. I hope you're doing great as well. Um, I know it's been months since I posted a video and I just want to thank those of you that um, have been patient and supportive um, with me. I really appreciate it so much. Um, I just was not in the headspace to create anything for several months. Um, my German Shepherd, Sasha, died in May. And uh, very suddenly, it was very unexpected. And um, I don't know, I really, really miss her. And I, I, I just... I was just grieving for her and then this the COVID situation and um, just the civil unrest that is going on in the country just took my anxiety level higher than what I thought it was, you know. Um, but for those of you that have been following me for a long time knows that my daughter is actually in the law enforcement field. And uh, so, luckily, where we're at, um, we are, you know, pretty much everyone around supports the police. And, um, but there for a, for a couple of weeks, uh, I really did worry about her um, and her job. So, um, I don't know. There was just a lot going on, and I just I just really was not in the headspace to create anything. Um, I did not touch a paintbrush. I did not pick up a pencil. Uh, I, I did literally no creative, creative anything um, up until probably a couple, two, three weeks ago. And um, then I decided uh, I wanted to uh, to just start getting back into it. I felt um, I felt the urge to start painting and being creative. Um, so, and that's not like me. I've always done some sort of creating. Um, well, I will say though uh, that I have been. I guess I have been a little bit creative. Um, I just started getting into Dungeons and Dragons, and um, so I've been, you know, writing a lot, creating campaigns, and I know it's all nerdy and game and all that kind of stuff, but um, I've always been, you know, I like, I've always played role-playing games anyway, especially like on the computers and stuff, um, so, but this is more out of my imagination and what I do. And uh, so that was a creative outlet. I've always been creative one way or the other, whether it be with writing or with uh, painting and crafting. Um, so instead of doing the crafting stuff, uh, I think I went more into the writing, which is what I tend to do when I'm uh, down and out and stressed. I go to writing because I can express myself better with words. Uh, so, but anyway, I'm feeling much better, and again, I appreciate all the support, and I really do appreciate it. So, with all of that said, I, the other day, I came up with an idea. Now, I had been, before all of this happened, and, and my mind went into a funk, I had started working on playing with resin, right? And um, I've created a few things with the resin. And the other day, I thought I had bought a whole pack of these. Just, I think they're four by four wood. Oopsie. Oh, that's water that's almost going to spill there. Um, four by four wood pieces here. And I got this whole pack off of Amazon. And I it was... I don't think it was very expensive at all for them. Um, so I have all of those and I thought, you know what would might be cool is if I make like a, you know, I was kind of thinking of Christmas things, you know, even though it is, um, it, well, it's September now, um, but you know, Christmas is coming right around the corner 
and I thought, you know what would be cute, I think, is to paint a little something on this wood, right, and then put resin over it, and make it like a coaster, like a little set of, of Christmas coasters. Um, so to try it out, I just sketched this little mouse. <laughs> I did it in Procreate. I sketched him out, and um, so now I've printed him, and I've traced him. So I'm going to get ready to put him on here. And my thought was I'll put him just like this right on there, and then we'll paint him. And um, we'll go from there on him. Uh, just to see and then I will probably um, do the resin off camera because I am still very new to it and plus I don't even know if this is going to work or not um, but I, I'm just interested in knowing uh, how it's going to end up looking with the resin on it after, on top of the paint um, I think it's going to look pretty cool. And on the back, what after the resin is done, you know, I'm thinking of doing a little piece of felt, cutting out a little piece of felt, like either green or red, and um, gluing it onto the back, right? And so that way it's a little coaster. Wouldn't it be cute? I think it's going to be cute. So stick around and um, see... Uh, we'll see what's going on, and of course, I'm going to go into probably um, over, you know, talking instead of talking on camera. All right. Okay, so I started to go ahead and trace my cute little mouse on to the wood with graphite paper and then I realized oh, oh no I forgot to seal the wood and it is very important to seal wood because if you do not it will take tons of paint to paint the wood right so I tried to erase what I had done with a kneaded eraser and then a regular eraser and it really didn't work but this is kind of my experimental piece, so to speak. Uh, and I was also pretty confident that I would be able to match up that little bit that I had already done. Now, I also went ahead and sanded this wood, even though I don't really feel it needed it. Uh, it felt smooth enough, uh, but I went ahead and did it. I did put a little bit too much on, so I had to put a little bit back in the bottle, but um, I made sure that it was nice and glossy all over it so that I would knew, know that it was good and sealed. I let it dry for probably about 20 minutes, and then um, I should have actually sanded it again, but I forgot. It's been a while since I've done this, so uh, I just went straight to doing the tracing on to the wood there uh, with the graphite. I always use my smallest stencil that I have to do this because it's, uh, it's more like a pencil and it does more fine lines than if you were to use a thicker stencil. And it turns out just fine. I do wait to do his face after I paint it. I should have also waited and did his little paws and probably the stripes on his uh, scarf, but it all works out in the end anyway. I will post down below the colors that I used on this cute little guy. This is celery green that I'm using for the background. I wanted the background to be greenish. I thought about doing maybe red, even like maybe a silverish color, grayish color would have also worked, but I don't know. I was in the mood to do green. Uh, I'm planning on making this a set because I want them to be coasters. So I will do at least four and maybe I will do four different colors, maybe a blue, a, the green, the red, and the silver color. So, I will keep you all apprised of that. You'll see that either on my Instagram, 
my Facebook group uh, page or on my community page here on YouTube. Now, I want to say that even though I put sealer on this, the paint acted very odd on this wood. I don't know if it's because the wood is n not the greatest quality wood. I don't know, but I had to do actually three layers of the green for the background. N and then on the mouse itself, I did just two base coats. And usually, I might can get away with just doing one base coat. It just depends on the colors. Usually the, the lighter colors, you do have to do it a couple of times, but the paint also acted very, very odd. This right here is um, gray sand, and it's a brand new bottle. I just got it not too long ago, and it just felt so thick. The paint felt really thick on this wood. It was really weird. I've not had that happen when I've painted on wood before. So I had to keep dipping my brush in water just a little bit. I added just a little bit of water in with the paint um, and to just to make it move a little bit better. So it was really, really an odd thing. And it may be because I forgot to sand the sealant. That may have been Part of the problem I am not sure because normally when I seal after I seal I do sand it just a little bit uh, so I, I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure what's going on I don't know if it's the wood or or what or what it was I, I really don't know but I got him painted nevertheless again couple of coats it would take to um, to get him painted and I wanted him gray. I thought about brown, but to me, brown mice usually represent like wild mice, you know, field mice. And I wanted him to be, you know, he's a um, part of the family. So I thought a gray little mouse will, will do him really, really, really good. So that's the colors that I ended up going with. So the inside of his ears and his little muzzle I painted with buttermilk. Buttermilk is what I used for those colors and it's just oh my gosh he's gonna end up coming out so cute and again a couple of coats of that usually with the buttermilk um, sometimes I have to do three coats with it because it kind of just because of the coloration of it, it kind of does some weird lines. And um, so, but two coats and he was good to go on that. And for his cute little scarf, I base coated the entire thing with the celery green. And um, I will end up putting some red over it. And you're thinking, why put green if you're going to put red? It just does this weird thing on wood. If you put green down before you put red, it makes the red just more red. I don't know how to describe it. It's just one of those things that I guess somebody figured out in the decorative painting world and um, everybody just follows it. And so I'm one of those people that just go and follow what has been done. And so that's what I do. I put green down and then put the red over it and it does make it look fantastic. So again, two coats of both of those colors and I will now be moving on to the cute little uh, peppermint little swirl that he's holding and for that I used for the white parts I used light buttermilk and then um, again I will put that celery green for where the red stripes will end up going now, when I drew this, it was kind of, um, I was, this, this, when I drew this, the peppermint was the one that gave me like the most, hmm, 
you know, it was like it, it tripped me a little bit. And even while doing this, I got tripped up a little bit about where my lines should be. So I had to take a minute and try to figure out, okay, it's going to swirl this way and it's going to swirl that way. But in the end, I think it turns out super cute. It's not perfect, but then again, um, I'm okay with it because it's hand made it is not made from a factory it's not printed it's not done in a software and then you know printed on to the wood it is hand done so I'm okay with it being a little not perfect you know because that's just me I like that so here you see that I'm trying to get it to where it looks um, at least a little bit more symmetrical with the little swirls so I am I am at least trying to get it to look perfect so but anyway it still comes out cute as I'll get out and then here I will come in with the red and you see that do you see how that just pops it makes that red pop I don't know why green and red really do not like each other if you were to mix those together you would get mud uh, but when you let that green dry and put the red over it woof, mwah, look at that it's just it's just like bam in your face hello so yeah and I think that will be it let's see for the base coating and then the next part that I will be doing will be the shading of everything and when that happens that is when it comes to life I will say um, oh his little nose is a uh, coral uh, melon or melon coral something like that again all it it will be down in the description I will say that the paints dried very quickly on this wood that was one good thing usually sometimes it takes you know it when you're painting on wood it doesn't take that long to begin with but here it took a while uh, I mean here it did not take nearly as long as it would normally um, I lost his little hands when I painted over them so I wanted to put them back on and I will put his eyes on as well to know where to put his eyes so uh, and the scarf I felt like I had enough of the lines that I had done before that I would not need to redo the lines but once I started shading it in it did um, I probably should have went over it with the graphite but in the end it works out to be okay then I had this great idea I want it to look like it's kind of snowing around him so I got my little stencil out and uh, this is a Tim Holtz little miniature it's like a, a holiday one you probably can get it off Amazon uh, I think I got it from Simon Says stamp maybe I don't really remember where I got it to be honest but I used titanium white and put the little dots on there uh, and I just think it comes out so cute and what I'm gonna do with the resin I already I'm right now as I'm editing this I have the resin going the first layer and it's very thin and what I want to do is put some little bit of glitter just little glitter here and there in the background and I think it's gonna work I'm hoping it will anyway so we'll see though <laughs> okay and so now his eyes I did I used lamp black for his eyes and now I'm getting ready to do the fun part the part that makes all decorative painting come alive and that is to do the shading the floating and I will tell you it really really was obvious when I started to work on this how this wood is just eats up liquid usually that would be enough to float like the whole almost the whole body I barely got around his ear there and then I was like this is not wet enough and I had to keep dipping my brush a lot more than what I normally do just to get it to to work the way that I'm used to it working it was a very odd phenomenon this <laughs> this wood is I, I, 
don't know. Even with the sealant, I just, I don't understand. Maybe I needed to do two coats of sealant, but I've never done that before. But anyway, it ends up working out. But look how cute already. Already. Look, he's so cute. Uh, that was avocado that I used to go around the shading part. And uh, I will shade his little scarf there with the same with avocado. And it just will make, oh, I just love it when it shades. I just love it, love it, love it. Love it. And I'll go around his little face and his little muzzle too uh, with the avocado. And now I'm moving on to the gray for his face face and I believe it was slate gray I used for that again the colors will be down in the description and then I did it around his little eyes to make his eyes kind of you know like twinkle a little bit kind of set in there and did it around his muzzle and his nose we'll start working on his cute little ears the inside of his little ears and I will work on his little muzzle and one of the good things uh, or one of the things that I have learned about doing um, like cheeks and stuff is to wet the area first with clear water and then just barely put any of the the paint on there and it makes it look so much cuter look how cute that is and that was the melon coral melon that i used for that he is so cute uh and then i'm gonna use for the i'm still trying to like kind of spread that out a little bit and i will end up using for his muzzle and his little bottom lip i'm gonna use a little bit of antique white to kind of do a little bit of shading on it. Uh, I probably should have went with a tad bit darker color because you can't, can't really tell what I did there. Uh, maybe next time I might go with sable brown maybe, but I felt like maybe that would have been too dark. But in the end, he still comes out cute, y'all, cute. And here I'm taking a little bit of Heritage Brick with that melon color and just, you know, popping it just a little bit more, making a little bit more rosy cheeked. And uh, I took some of the uh, Heritage Brick and went on the left side of his little nose to give it a little shadow as well. And for his body, I believe is what I'm going to move on next yes is i'm using that slate gray again to go around his body underneath the scarf around his paws and around the peppermint to just make it look like it is three dimensional and now i'm taking a little bit of warm white and i'm using it as highlights for the top of his little head his little ears and on his little paws Oh my gosh, y'all. The more I'm looking at this, he's just so cute. Can't handle it. Oh, I'd like to have this little buddy. Like, really, for real. And before I uh, go any further, I'm going to go ahead and put the stripes on his little scarf. And here I was having a little bit trouble seeing where my lines were at. And that's when I was like, mm, I probably should have put the lines on with the graphite. But I think it turns out okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is just fun. I love it. So again, I'm using Country Red. That is the red that I have been using. Now I'm going to take Black Plum and do some shadow work onto the red that was on the peppermint. And then I'm going to use Titanium White to put some highlights in the white part of the peppermint to kind of, you know make it look more white and I'm just putting a little bit more of the black plum in there and then I'll take the black plum and I will now go see how fast that red dried that quickly it's just it was amazing how fast it it dried on here and then um, I guess I'm just taking the black plum on that. And now I'm just taking the avocado and I'm mixing 
Uh, not yet, but I will mix some of the avocado with a little bit of black green to uh, push this back just a little bit into the the uh, the painting here. Yeah, right here. Just kind of make it a little bit deeper. So, oh, it is so cute. Oh my gosh, I just love it. And now I'll use a script brush and a little bit of car, uh, camel and put like little stitchings down the side of the stripes there. I thought that looked really cute. Uh, usually script brushes scare me, but this script brush I really like. I'm, I'll put it down below. Um, it was amazing how well it, it actually worked. Just make sure your paint is good and fluid. You know, I just added water to it and uh, used the red to make the little stripes there. And then used black to make his little eyebrows and his little eyelashes. And then I started to do his whiskers and I'm like, no, I'm scared. Can't do that yet. <laughs> so then I moved on to his tail and uh, kind of swirled his tail up. And then I wanted, of course, the bottom to be a little bit fatter than the top because uh, that's how my tails usually look like. And then here I went ahead and I just did it. And I just made the whiskers. And it wasn't as scary as what I thought with this brush. It's amazing. I think I, I probably got it at Michael's more than likely or Hobby Lobby. So I'll put it down in the description below on what I did. And then I put little dots for his little, you know, where the little whiskers would come out. Use my smallest stylus and put little white highlights into his eyes oh my gosh isn't he adorable oh he's a cute little christmas mousy and then i will add a little bit of um pine on top of his head for like a little hat whatever with a little few little holly berries to go with that and for that i used First, I used black green, and then I went to not celery green. I think it was jade green. I'll write it down. I can't really remember the, the color of the the green that I used, but it's a lighter color. Um, Hauser light medium probably is what I used. And uh, then I realized I should have put the light first and then put the dark color. So then I'll go back over it with a little bit more of the the uh, black the black green and then I'll take my neon fiery red and do little bitty dots for the highlights for the berries and there I'm just putting more black green on that and then there he is he is pretty much done isn't he adorable so uh, like I said, as I'm editing this, the resin is going and I will be back with some more of what the resin looks like and hopefully it did not destroy the painting. I did spray it with matte clear spray to make sure that it would be okay. So we'll see. All right, I shall return. Okay, so here he is all done. The resin is hard and uh, the glitter stayed where I put it and the paint it looks just like it did before I put the resin on it which I was a little bit concerned about that because resin does do a chemical reaction and sometimes it discolors things but I think spraying it with the matte clear uh, helped preserve the color of the paint and um, what I did is I put a very thin layer of resin on first Waited about an hour, hour 15 minutes, took a toothpick, made sure that it was sticky, and it was, and then I put the chunk glitter around where I wanted it so that I knew that it would stay in just that area. If I had done it when I first laid down the resin, the resin is very, you know, liquidous, very fluid, and it would have just, the glitter would have gone wherever it wanted to go. And it may have gone over the mouth and I did not want that. So after I put the glitter on, I did another uh, thin layer, the same amount, I believe it was half a tablespoon uh, on top of that to seal it. And it 
just worked out perfectly. I just love it. The thing to be mindful though, if I can put it on here, is um, I do do this out in my garage because you need to have ventilation and I still even use a, a respirator and I wear gloves because it is toxic but don't be afraid of resin just use your precautions uh, I have my garage doors open when I when I mess with the resin but I did get cat fur on it because I got in I got ahead of myself like I usually do when I get excited or when I'm doing something new and I just want to see if it's going to work. I put this down on a cup and then I didn't want to move it and I would have had to move it to put a container over it. So the next time I'll have my container available before I pour any of the resin. That way I can put the container over it to keep dust, cat fur, etc. off of it. But uh, this one's going to be mine anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. The back does have a little bit of resin on it, like little bumps. Uh, the, I put it on a cup, as you can see. The reason was to like kind of have it just drip down like this. I have a silicone mat that it drips on and um, I think this happened from when I picked it up to kind of move the resin like this when I first did it so I've got to be mindful of some things like I said I'm very new to using resin so but this is nothing that a Dremel uh, sander will not sand down very quickly it's not very thick at all and uh, and then it will be also covered when I put felt on it so I'm not too concerned about that but if you do this and you sand it make sure you wear a respirator even in any kind of dust chalk dust wood dust resin dust you should be wearing a mask of some sort not just a you know one that will keep particles from coming in so um but I have a respirator and I started working with resin right when COVID hit and I was lucky enough to get a respirator. I tried to find them at Home Depot, Lowe's, even online. And uh, we went to one of the little uh, hardware stores that is probably, you know, in a city that is 20 minutes from us. And uh, luckily they had one left in stock. So I grabbed it. <laughs> But um, it's been very difficult to find the things that you need working craft wise. It's been so funny, like my gloves. It's hard to find the nitrile gloves, uh, the respirator, alcohol. Uh, Y'all, I'm getting concerned because I've got half a bottle of the 91% alcohol. And that is what you need when you're working with resin to like clean up spills and stuff like that. And uh, I'm getting very nervous because it's so hard to find the alcohol. It's just is nowhere to be had. I, I'm like, y'all, can you, you know, we got toilet paper now. Let's get on with the res. I mean, with the uh, the alcohol. Let's go, you know. So, but anyway, um, so that is my little mouse. I think he turned out cute. I'm excited to finish him up and to do uh, another three of them for my set. I will probably put another set of these on my Etsy store. So be on the lookout for that because um, I really enjoyed doing them. I think he looks really cute and it worked out the way that I wanted it to. So that got me excited. And um, But I will go ahead and put the pattern of him on my Facebook group. It'll be link linked down below. Um, it'll be free, so you can go and download it, use it whatever way you want to use it. Um, just if you, you know, if you use them and you put it online anywhere or sell it, just, you know, give me credit for the um, pattern. That's all I ask. So I would love, though, to see pictures if you do do him. So I, I will, ugh, I'll be looking for those, but I think he turned out so cute. He's adorable. So, all right, y'all. Well, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. I think this was a good comeback video. I felt good about it, even though there's been some tough technical difficulties, and I truly am blaming Mercury and Retrograde for that. Right now, my internet is down. It's Tuesday. I am hoping that they will hurry and get it up so that I can get this ready to be posted for tomorrow. Uh, so, and yesterday was a lot of kaflooies as well with the... Uh, 
just things happening because of Mercury being in retrograde. I'll be glad. I think he's near his last end and he's just hanging on tooth and nail. And he is like, I'm not going out without a bang. So, but anyway, there he is. He's so cute. All right, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. If you like the video, please like and share it and subscribe if you've not subscribed. All of that helps my channel to grow and I would appreciate it so much. All right, y'all. Y'all be good to one another and I'll talk to you later. Bye.